good morning everyone it gives me immense pleasure to be here for my new course aircraft systems this is for the 6th uh, semester today i am going to go for the introduction of this course in this we have the some content of this course on this today's lecture so in this we have first system concept and the subsystem generic system definitions input output feedback external influence then we have aircraft systems in this we have aircraft systems vehicle systems airframe systems vehicle system avionic system mission system then we have a specification of requirement this is the mission requirements and performance requirement now <coughs> introduction i will go with what is an aircraft so a vehicle that flies through the lift flies through lift from the air means the vehicle which is flying in air and by generating the lift like balloon is also flying but balloon is not the aircraft because the aircraft has to generate a lift and that has to fly in air this name comes from the origin of this aircraft is the greek word aircraft once we talk about the aircraft systems and subsystems we have the airframe vehicle avionics and the mission mission system this other than airframe they are the vehicle avionics and missions they are part of the airborne aircraft systems and they are for the for safe operation of the aircraft the aircraft systems we can divide airborne systems into four components that is the airframe structure system vehicle system avionic system and the mission system that we have to we have shown here if you see the aircraft systems we can divide into four that is airframe or structure system vehicle systems avionic system and the mission system if you talk about airframe system the aircraft body the fuselage the wing tail vertical stabilizer horizontal stabilizer your landing gears and all other body part they are inside the structural elements like longerons stringers skin all these parts comes under airframe and structural systems then we come for the vehicle system in the vehicle system we have the engine system we have the flight control system we have hydraulic system pneumatic system electrical systems all comes under the vehicle system once we go about avionic system the avionic system is the avionic what is the meaning of avionic it is a electronics for the aviation means the electronic which is used for aircraft missiles spacecraft helicopters or any flying vehicle those systems are called avionic system and they are mostly the electronic equipment in avionic system we can further divide in the communication system navigation system landing system uh, automatic flight control system so many things are there they are part of the avionic system nowadays the 60 to 70% of the aircraft is depend upon the avionic system and this avionic system has revolutionized the systems and in this we use the computer operated flight management system and there are so many other systems which we we use for this avionic system next is the mission systems we know that the aircraft when it is going it is it has got some mission and that mission has to be fulfilled to achieve that type of mission we need to have some special equipments those equipments are called the mission equipments and those are used for the some specific mission i will give some example you know the helicopters helicopters if they are in the indian navy air force or army their basic role is to go for the war but you have seen that these aircrafts are also used for emergency operations like flood fire earthquake natural calamities or anything if any abnormality or abnormal activities are happening by the nature 
our mission is performed by helicopter and you might have seen that so many people are lifted by one sling the sling is coming from the top and there is a hook in that hook people are tied up and they are lifted up that system is called the rescue high system this rescue high system is used for search and rescue operation this mission is called the search and rescue so there are a few equipments by that they will try to find out the location where this accident has happened our helicopter will go and from there it will be lifted up or some people will go if any emergency medical requirement is there doctor or some nurses or some medical assistant will be on board the helicopter it will be dropped there with the all necessary medical equipments and medicines and they will give the first aid or they will try to lift up if it is very serious case so like this medical assistants fire assistant electric power in uh, in us and all the all big towers of current that is high tension wires are repaired by the help of helicopter however india i have not seen this maybe in few years this in india also we are going to use the helicopters for electric fault also the, you might have seen so many aircrafts are used for fire extinguish jungle fire or some fire it is taking place in so many countries nowadays we are very fortunate that in india we are very much safe we are not seeing that much fire in india but we can use in any type of calamities you might have seen in uttarakhand that fire has this flood has happened uh, four or five years back like this uh, so many operations in super cyclone in odisha we have uh, operated from so many helicopters and we have given the medicine we have given the food we have given so many things we have supplied for an emergency need earthquake in gujarat in lakh and this um, kach area we have tried to supply so like this for different mission we need the different types of equipment so whether the aircraft is suitable for that or not if you see the helicopter for indian navy they are made anti submarine warfare they are made for that purpose so they should have sonar to detect the submarine and they should also have some missiles or torpedoes by which you can fire and kill the your enemy submarine so like this mission system also has to be performed now i am <clears throat> further going ahead with all these systems you can see here in this diagram a very good diagram in this here are this key elements this is the ram air the ram air is the air which is pressurized by the motion of the aircraft by the dynamics or the motion when aircraft is going the air is compressed and pressure is increased that air is used for the aircraft for some emergency requirement bleed air it is the air which is tapped from the engine after the few stages of the compressor fuel is used for burning inside the engine hydraulic systems are used for operation of landing gears doors flaps control surfaces and all so many other equipments are used these equipments are working with the help of the hydraulic system we have the electrical power this electrical power is to supply the current and also to give supply for the avionics and all electrical equipments which are fitted inside the aircraft especially the cockpit where pilot is sitting engine oil the engine oil is used for the cooling of the engine especially the lubrication of the bearings inside the engine and fan cabin air because we need to have a very good air inside the uh, fuselage where passengers and pilots are sitting we should have sufficient and pressurized air so that you need not to face any face any difficulty so these are the few systems which are written and th uh, these things are shown here in this diagram this i will start with the fuel here because this is the wing and most of the thing this uh, this 90% of the fuel is saved inside the or uh, filled inside the fuel uh, inside the uh, uh, wing so here this you can see that fuel from here it will go with this line okay this you can see it goes to the engine from engine it is burned and your power is achieved but if you see here 
one one part of the fuel it is coming here and it is hydraulic systems are there this hydraulic system is a pump is fitted on top of the engine when engine is rotating this pump hydraulic pump is rotating this hydraulic pump is getting the hydraulic oil from here and it is precise and it is going to the hydraulic power system where all the control surfaces elevator aileron rudder slats flaps your doors your landing gear and so many other things are operated by the hydraulic so it is going from here and if you see that one part is going for the cooling and this hydraulic oil is cooled by the fuel just you see it is going here and air is coming from here some part is cooled by air and some part is cooled by the fuel same way here also this fuel itself is cooled by one another air cooling system because if you see here this is the your ram air this is the your engine oil engine oil which is lubricating your shaft it is going to the air and oil cooler this is cooled by help of the air which is moving from this side and then it goes to the fuel and oil cooler here it is first cooled by the air and still it is hot this hot oil is further cooled by the help of fuel which is stored in the tank here inside the wing so so nice everything is everyone is helping to each other so fuel is not only used for the supply of engine but it is also used for cooling hydraulic system oil system and these things are used here if you see here uh, electrical system is here electrical system is here is alternator this alternator is also rotated by the help of the engine it is rotating and giving ac and dc supply and it is going to the electrical power generation and it is electrical bus bar from there it is distributing to the different systems which are used for aircraft operations if you see here the, the pink color is a bleed air this bleed air is taken out from the external or the uh output of the fuel stage because we know that in the uh, turbo engines there are number of stages of the compressor maybe 10 stages 15 even 20 stages are there so after some 8 to 9 stages of the compressor where we feel that the pressure is sufficient to give this pressurization inside the cockpit or inside the cabin where all the passengers are sitting this air is going from here and then it will go to the air conditioning unit just you can see here and the hot air is directly it is going to the mixing plenium in the mixing plenium the air conditioned air that is a cold air and from here hot air it is going here and here it is mixed in such a way that a very comfortable temperature from 16 to 20 degree is maintained inside and it goes to the avionics and the cabin of the people here um, passengers and the all avionics equipments are there so so nice you can see that here itself you have so many system that is the fuel system then hydraulic system then electrical system then fan casing then you have the this uh, bleed air systems and this you can see here that we have the ram air this you see here ram it is a flow of air which is going due to the velocity or the speed of the aircraft the some air is coming from this side this air is used to cool the system let it be the fuel systems oil system pneumatic systems all these things are cooled by the help of this ram air so in this we have we have seen that so many uh, systems are involved and this gives a basic introduction of different types of systems we will be going in the future in different types of systems used in the aircraft we can see here that uh, there is a system and then further every system is divided into subsystems and further it is sub subsystems so like this we have different types of okay, system arrangement 
So this you can see a major uh, subsystem and its uh, uh, subsystems. So here is a system and this system is divided into one, two, three subsystems and every such system is further divided in number of again sub subsystems. So like this the uh, systems are divided in different subsystems and every subsystem will have different components. So it is just a an idea about how this system and subsystem are working. So like one hydraulic system. So the hydraulic system is a one but it will go for a different places like you landing gears. Landing gears need a very high pressure. So that will have different types of components, very high high pressure pump, your NRV, your uh, this um, sort of wall uh, and number and they all are with a very high pressure resistance. But if you same thing will go for a door closing, we don't need much high pressure. If you want to operate some flaps or something, we don't need that much high as it is in the uh, this landing gear or your your um, wheels and your landing making up and down or retracting and extracting. So there we need a very high uh, pressure. Same way for the electric supply, the generator is one. It is generating the AC power. Somewhere we need the DC power. Somewhere we need the AC power. So th there are the transformers. There are the transducers. They are converting from AC to DC and DC to AC and as per their voltage because few equipments work as a uh, 12 volts. Few are working in 24 volt of DC. Few equipments work 110 volt of AC, some are working 240 volt of AC, few are working 420, so like this. So for electrical system, there are so many, so many subsystems as per the requirement, these subsystems will vary and their components, their size and their rating will also vary. So that is the importance of this. Okay, system and subsystems are here it is shown here. So here system, subsystem, individual system, airframe systems, avionic systems and mission system. In mission if you see C and G C, C and G and C is called guidance and the control. C and I is called the container network interface. If you see here we have HMI, EMI, the HMI is human machine interface and if you see here we have different uh, EMI is electrical magnetic interface. So here EMI, HMI, these are for the safety. Our system should be very much safe so that aircraft can work nicely as per the requirement. And here if you see interface incorporated into aircraft design. So here airframe system, avionic system, this avionic system has to be GNC and CNI and also these systems should be HMI, EMI safe means the electromagnetic interference should not affect our system. Okay, so like this we have okay, generic form of a system. If you see the aviation system environment, we have input that is materials, components, people, energy. It should be processed and this you will get output and from output you will get the feedback and if any correction is required, this system will automatically correct. Generic form of a system, if you see here input, input we have demand, sensor, other systems, feedback. Then we have the function, process, control, local feedback. Then output we have the waste product, flight deck, other system, reflectors, energy, power source. So like this input, output and there is a process. They are the process. So these three components are required for any generic so system. So we have seen here that <coughs> here I will just take some two three minutes on this. In this we have air airframe system, then avionic systems, and then mission system. And here we have CNI that's called C container network interface, and here G and C guidance and control. Okay, so here EMI elect electrical magnetic interference yours this all the systems there should not be any electromagnetic interference if the in electromagnetic interference is present your system will not work properly it is likely to be failed and your avionics 
that is navigation communication and all electronics will be giving a different value your all this pdf there is a primary <coughs> display uh, function systems and the main display systems all are the avionic system and they will not function properly if it is not done in a proper way so it is our duty to make sure that every system has to work as per the required condition okay so try to make the system in such a way that your systems are working properly okay so in this way i am here and if you see here this generic form of a system here we have the input what are the in, we need input and output and there is a process in input we have to give some input that is materials component people energy and this goes to a process in the process after that we will get some output output may be a transfer of energy transfer of data waste product or some movement of your control your lowering of your uh, your landing gears retracting extension and the retraction so aircraft engineering environment and but we should have a feedback so that input can be varied the whole system can be automated so that the system input will be varies if outputs are not achieved as per the requirement here if you see the in this generic form the input we have the demand how much demand is there how much is the sensor and other systems energy feedback this feedback is coming from the output and this demand sensors this all will go to the function process control here we have the local feedback this local feedback will go to here output is a waste product flight deck in this all instruments will be there other systems like hydraulic system pneumatic system your electrical system avionic systems all the things are coming under other systems then it will go to afflector and it will go to the energy and from here if it is not working as per required output then it will go give a feedback and this feedback will go to this local feedback your processes and input will be changed so in this way we can do our work and try to get our best output whatever is possible from the given system these are the references for this course uh, th these are the very good book and try to get this book that is the moyer i and seber aircraft systems mechanical electrical and avionics uh, systems professional engineering published limited london and it is from the uk and another is moyer i and seber a design and development of aircraft system and introduction aia education series these are the two books which i am referring in this course try to get these books from the library or from the uh, online and try to learn okay thank you very much if any questions you can post me to my email that is y d d w i v e d i at the rate g mail.com any questions are welcome and i i am very eager i am waiting for your answers yeah your question okay thank you very much i am ending here uh, okay my topic and hope this will be very useful for you all okay thank you very much like share and subscribe hit the bell icon for more updates